Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I like to think that I am a nerd. And if you're a nerd too, then you probably know this song. It's one of those songs that nerdy people like to reference. And in my case, it just ends up fly straight over my head. And I feel like not knowing it is really starting to mess with my nerd cred. So let's change that and let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, I was thinking to myself, no way, did they just rip this classical piece off? Because <laughs> this whole beginning, I think that's, I want to say A Night on Bald Mountain Mazorsky. I know it's used in Fantasia. I'm pretty sure that they took it from Mazorsky. Um, I, that's not a Beastie Boys song. I distinctly have memories of Mickey and like shooting water in Fantasia and thinking, wow, this song is so cool. And then go, going and looking and seeing, oh, it's based off of classical music and then becoming very, very excited about symphonies. Uh, all that said, I love that they referenced it because I believe that right here is where their song actually gets started. And it's true that that original elicits some sort of like fantastic out of this world magical element. We're going to go back to the beginning. Also, <laughs> I didn't intentionally turn the closed captions on, <laughs> um, but sometimes when you open up a, a song in YouTube, I, I don't know, sometimes they're on, sometimes they're not on. I'm not sure if that's a setting that I've done. I probably should know. I'm a YouTuber, but uh, I think it might just be an automatic thing on a page. And the fact that it immediately brought up parentheses with foreboding orchestra music. I was like, yeah, we'll leave them on. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> I'm gonna double check the name of this before I do the outro. So stick around if you wanna be sure. Okay, so mad scientist about to crash on a planet. I think presumably Earth because we just went by the moon. Yep. <gasps> oh, are they like beaming down a robot? Is that what's happening? Transformers! and funky and there's such a hilarious groove underneath I feel like I just want to like kind of get low with it <laughs> I love the unexpectedness of this I would expect like maybe some more electronic house music and instead I feel like I'm really digging into hip-hop <laughs> it's amazing I also feel like this is the surprise and humor that electric cowboy has <laughs> So big plus on that. I'm gonna go back a little bit. I, I don't know if I can take this seriously and I don't know if I'm supposed to. That totally looked like Elvis. <laughs> Are, are people supposed to understand those words? I Because they're on the screen with the CCs that appeared magically, um, I I can pick them out. <laughs> but I, I feel like the words maybe aren't the point here. 
points. <laughs> Maybe the whole point is is sick dance moves. <laughs> Who knows? Let's keep going. And robotic Tweety Bird. <laughs> Meaning to the word dance move robot. Ooh, it's gonna break. Um, <laughs> I like rapophile and how they they brought that in there. All of these rhymes are, <laughs> I think they're approaching the ridiculous. We've had so many aisle rhymes happen. It's just like, whoa, they're almost forced and intentionally so for the comedic, comedic effect. I'm going to come back. I, guys, I, I've heard the name the Beastie Boys for a long time. It's a, kind of a sticky name. You're like, Beastie Boys. Do they fly with Peter Pan? <laughs> You're like, ooh, that's intriguing. Beastie Boys, hmm. And I, I've always wondered what they sounded like. You know, it, you think, well, other bands that involved boys from maybe around this era, like who, are they going to be a little bit like the Beatles? Is that, no, is that, no, Beatles were a little bit earlier. <laughs> I had no idea. Do they just mostly rap? I, I are they gonna clean sing? I don't know. I heard some really crazy robotic, slightly melodic material in there, but so far it's been rapping, and I'm not really not sure if we're gonna have singing here. This is, this is a weird experience. <laughs> like this is like I could build some melody out of this. Yeah. <laughs> That's like robot fry. And that's robot head voice. That's definitely robot fry right there. Like fry registered robot. Don't you tell me to smile. You stick around and make your foot show why. But no one's beyond what you can tell. Maybe it's because I'm so versatile. Style profile. I said, it always makes you back when I hear ooh child. From the hunter never had to the now. I brought the marathon to the very last mile. Well, if you battle me, I'll feel profile. that they keep going back and forth between these guys dancing and the robot dancing. And there's so many parallel moves that are happening, but in like different styles at the same time. And every now and then it speeds up and it feels like we're inside the matrix. Okay, I'm gonna go. Except for this came after the matrix. No, sorry, the matrix came after this. That's what I meant. Maybe the matrix was inspired by these sick moves. <laughs> back just a little bit here the plants coming down the side the uh, abandoned streets the robots facing off in it i feel like we're in some sort of apocalyptic error uh, era error <laughs> um and it's possible that zombies killed everybody and that there are spores growing somewhere but you're safe if you're inside a robot suit it's weird <laughs> I hate to disagree, but I feel like sugar should be with chocolate, personally. Um, and if you add some cream to that, get some milk chocolate. That sounds sounds really, really good. Uh, I personally will go for tea. Y'all probably know this because tea time interviews are a thing on this channel. Um, but if I'm going to have tea, I need to have a little half and half in it. If it's black tea, if it's a green or a white tea, I like to just keep it clean. No sugar. 
thank you very much. No sugar unless we're talking chai. Then I'll add some sugar, some honey, and definitely some cream. Now, if we're talking about coffee, I do drink coffee. I, I know, I feel like it's blasphemy, but I'm, I'm not one to judge uh, and say, just because I like tea, I'm gonna hate coffee. I like some coffee, I prefer tea, but I like some coffee quite a bit. And I, I like coffee enough that I don't want it to be destroyed by sweeteners. <laughs> Personal opinion, personal opinion. You can slay me in the comments if you want and tell me why coffee should be had with sugar and cream. Uh, this is all to, of course, start up some riotous conversations there in that live chat premiere. Uh, we can talk about coffee, tea, and chocolate, please, because hot chocolate should be included among those two. Okay, let's keep going. Step inside the party, disrupt the whole scene. When it comes to beach, well, I'm That is interesting. The way that they have these pitch slides up, it almost feels like you're revving up a bunch of times, but it feels really distorted at the same time. The camera angles everywhere and the coloring makes it feel like I'm inside of some sort of biohazard suit. <laughs> I love the way they've got the lit, lit, lit going in different sides of the headphones. It feels like I get drawn this way, like I'm kind of like sucked out of the side of the headphone and I'm like, out the other side. It's pretty, pretty fun. Uh, also, <laughs> again, I keep wondering if there's gonna be singing and I think the answer is no. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna get grumpy about the emphasis. Planetary. Gosh, I feel like they're making fun of enunciation, or I should say pronunciation in this case. Planetary. Ugh, that's not where the emphasis goes. <laughs> Octopus sorcerer versus robot. Uh, this is this is hilarious. Wow. <laughs> uh, I got to come back here one more time. I they've had so many rhymes that I I think they're adding so much humor by forcing the rhyme so often. It's just it's like how can I make sure that I get in some way to a rhyme and then they'll build a sentence that doesn't necessarily make sense within context to get to that rhyme. It's ridiculous. And I I love the way that this has got like edgy humor that is also really sophisticated at the same time. He likes to keep it clean. Oh, clean. Wanna shine like gay so wow. deep. Deep. Fun radicals, that's my dream. 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 Oh, deep for sticking to me. No way! Oh, I didn't realize that they were actually inside the robot still. I should have gotten that from when it zoomed into the eyes, but I thought I was just getting a scene shift. They are inside the robot. Um, anybody else feel like Pacific Rim was behind its time after seeing this? <laughs> like, such a good movie. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely get Pacific Rim vibes, and I'm really not sure if this looks like an illithid, possibly, possibly, right? D&D, &D, 
meets Pacific Rim meets Beastie Boys, I guess. Oh, this is fun. I like the mix. <laughs> Whoa, I like that. It almost is like R2D2 started rapping. Oh, I need to see R2D2 and C3PO put together a serious rap sequence now. Slash, does that exist already online? That seems like the kind of thing that would exist. Hmm. Hmm. So this particular sound, the like R2-D2 rap sound, it feels slightly human to me. And I think that when we're talking about synthesized sounds, sometimes there are ones that are created purely from a signal. And sometimes there are ones that are created based off of humans or some sort of live playing that's being shifted then. So uh, like a really good example is recently I uh, had a sort of fascinating post-reaction interview with Lane Stein right after listening to one of Voice Play's newest songs called Class Classical Chaos. And in it, he took me through the production especially focusing on the beatboxing. And he was showing me how he created this essentially like digital arpeggiator, I mean, meaning that there were a bunch of notes that were hit by his voice. He essentially recorded one piece of his voice and then put that as if it was like extra keys that you could just play. So it had a human quality that was mixed with an electronic quality. And that makes it have still a, like a little bit of an organic feel to it. Um, which is extremely important if you're going to be doing a cappella music. Um, but it, it beefed out the song extra and gave it lots of running energy, which was really, really cool. Check that out on our channel if you haven't already. I think it's a very, very interesting and honestly not in the usual catalog of things that we do. It's sort of a, a special one-off. This sound that we're hearing, uh, that wee, 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 like the r 2 d 2 inch sound there, that has that kind of human quality behind it. And so it feels like it's not just programming. It feels very human driven. And I'm not sure in what way it's human driven. It might be somebody making funny sounds in a mic and then getting processed. It might be somebody doing some sort of awesome uh, like scritching. <laughs> That section is definitely Power Rangers. Hilarious. Oh man, the the captions totally ruined it for me because I saw Flintstone down there. I was like, what? Flintstones? Me? The and and then when it came in, it didn't land with the right humor. And this is one of those times when I think captions can totally ruin something. I wish I'd had the sort of like the stamp of, ha ha, I got you with a really funny rhyme at that moment. <laughs> Rhymes are spread like pots. <laughs> What is the fun so what? Drop! That was amazing. That corrects me. I'm sorry again. It's like we got a little influence of ACDC there for a second. <laughs> I love that. That's so... The, there's 
like even a little extra distortion on it. That is just perfectly timed and that is the perfect tone quality for that line. <laughs> The beat and the bass and how low they just all shifted is so delicious. This is the kind of thing I want to hear in a live crowd. And again, with that getting low idea, like watch how low everybody gets there because it just feels like it wants to sink into the ground and it needs some really big, big speakers. I, I'm a big fan of listening to music and headphones. Really good cans, I think, provide so much detail. That's honestly my preferred way to listen to music is in a fantastic set of open-backed headphones. I have links to that, uh, to different headphones I recommend in the About section if you ever want to go check it out. However, when we're talking about that super low, yummy bass, that kind of thing and a big speaker system and then the energy of the crowd dropping, ooh, that's hard to get at home. <laughs> Just That's hard. We get as close as we can with excellent monitors, like speakers, but cans, getting that bass as yummy as those huge speaker systems and then you just can't get the crowd energy at home now. Uh, this is this is delicious. I feel like uh, what's something that's bassy that you would eat? I'll come up with it in a bit. Let's get back to it. I'm going to think about what kind of food is representative of this drop. Get biz on the crop, crop. Beatsy boys know to let the beat. Mm, drop. <laughs> <laughs> the Mr. Spock's bench all over. Um, <laughs> such a good reference. Nicely done. Uh, food wise, not stir fry. Stir fry is way too light for this moment. Even though it was in our lyrics, it is definitely not the kind of food that makes me think of that dropping kind of feeling in my stomach. Now, I feel like that is achieved maybe by lots of beans and the rumble that begins afterwards. But maybe beans and meat. We gotta have some sort of meat with that. So, uh, gosh, we're gonna have maybe some sort of like enchiladas, but like the heaviest, the heaviest. Like if I had pork belly enchiladas, my stomach would feel way too heavy and it would rumble the way it's rumbling here. So there we go, pork belly enchiladas. I've never actually had them, but that is what reminds me of the beat there. <laughs> I told you this was gonna be a weird video. If you try to me, you get my I like that Spock reference a lot. He's like, now nah, I gotta keep dancing. You don't understand. The will to dance is stronger than the whatever your spell is. Oh no! Oh, that's the another dimension. I wasn't even paying attention to the captions there. I was just thinking how much this reminds me now of like Godzilla, right? Versus King Kong. <laughs> this is so, it just feels like it's an iconic fight. I don't know who first came up with this idea of massive creatures fighting each other in, uh, inside of cities with all kinds of electrical lines that could get in the way, but we've seen this over and over since then. Uh, who came up with it first? I'm curious, let me know in comments again. Man, we are gonna have a very chatty comment section in this premiere. Thank you guys, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Deep.
inflated octopus. Oh, and he's taken off? It's a Gundam! Did I just get, did I just get nerd cred back? To infinity and beyond. I have done a lot of silly videos on this channel. A lot of nerdy videos. This one and all of the references in it may take first, but if you wanna check out a few others and tell me which one you think is the most nerdy, check out this playlist over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.